Um, imagine an organization in which everyone there has read your book and uh, everyone has built their personal board of directors and they're you know assiduously working to uh, apply your advice about how do you how do you gain power what kind of organization would that be and would it be one where you you know would you want to work there most people don't do this it's the same reason you know i the, the studies of genius in every field art literature mathematics the studies of high performance in sports all say the same thing. Individual ability matters, but what matters most is the 10,000 hours, which is the number I hear bandied about a lot, and it varies, of course, from field to field, the hours of practice and coaching. So the question is, why doesn't everybody play golf uh, with a two handicap? And the answer is not that there's some mystery as to what they need to do to become a better golfer. It's that they don't have the self-discipline to put in the hours and the practice and the coaching. There's a price to power. Uh, and one of the prices is the, is the focus of attention and the energy and the effort. I don't know if, and I think you would agree with this, Gary, I know of very few very successful people who don't devote a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of effort and their, to, the, to their jobs and their careers. And that's true whether you're a professional football player or, uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh, the famous Stanford coach, which I hope he stays as a coach, but probably won't. He'll probably go somewhere else. I mean, successful football coaches are all the time in the film room or watching the films. And when you're watching the films, you're not with your wife or the husband or kids or, you know, friends or lovers or whatever. And, and so there is definitely a, a, a price to be paid. And this is true whether you're going to be a professional athlete or a great a pianist or a great violinist or whatever. And not everybody is going to be willing to pay that price. So people need to talk not only what am I willing to do ethically, but what am I willing to give up in order to occupy these positions? And by the way, don't believe once you get there uh, that you then go into retirement. I mean, I know no CEOs that, that are enormously focused and very hard working to the best of their abilities on their job. And they're traveling all the time and doing all kinds of things. And so, again, it's, a, it's an issue I think people have to figure out how they want to live their lives. As you have said, and I certainly agree with, uh, this is not a uh, dress rehearsal. This is the main event. And people need to think, I think, deeply about what is important to them uh, and then, th then, make their paths, uh, then make their plans accordingly. But I think they also need, at least in my opinion, they need to have the best and most honest research evidence possible about how the world actually works.